Hi, I'm Steve Rosales, and welcome to another edition of Ask the Police Chief. With me today, of course, is the Police Chief, James McIsaac. Chief, nice to see you. Nice to see Thanks you. Thanks for coming on back. I didn't frighten you last time around, huh? No, not at all. See, that's why the Chief is uh, such a good uh, get here, because he'll answer whatever questions one may have. In previous editions, we talked about the reduction in force. We've talked about the vacancies that need to be filled. Those are all, of course, budget issues. Um, but in addition to manpower or person power or whatever they call mm -hmm. it, now, officers on the street, personnel, uh, which obviously has a budget implication, those officers need to have equipment. They need to have supplies. They need to have implements of the trade, so to speak. Uh, so I'm going to ask you to look into, uh, to fantasize maybe for 10 minutes or so. Okay. So if there was an unlimited budget, Chief, what, what, what would you want? What, what do you need? What would you like if there was, uh, in this dream world? Uh... Yeah, oh, good question. And I actually, um, I was asked that question when I uh, was going through the process for uh, applying for the police chief's job. I believe it was, uh, at that time he was committee member, uh, Mark Palillo, who was the chairman of the select board now. I believe that was a question that he posed to, to the candidates. What, what I would like in, in the Belmont Police Department, and um, not in any particular order, but let's talk about kind of like support services first, would be an IT person, or it would be IT slash software specialist, somebody to run our website, somebody to run our social media. You know, we have Twitter, we have uh, Facebook, we don't have Instagram because it's just one more thing to take on. Um, somebody to, to, to manage our software systems, we run a, a, a very... Um, robust record management system. We have a scheduling software. We have um, two programs that help us maintain, uh, share information with inside the police department. And then not only do you have the computers inside the police station, we have computers inside the police vehicles that need to be managed. And um, so I would like to have somebody dedicated uh, solely for that. For you the don't IT have that stuff. now? Who does that we now? Have, we have uh, an individual who does that. He's very good at it. Unfortunately, he does uh, the work of three people. Um, he does uh, facilities. He does. Uh, he builds our police cruises. He uh, manages our radios. Um, all that, all that kind of stuff. Um, so he's pretty much overwhelmed um, with with the workload that that he has, and um, it's it's you know it, it's a challenge because he's he does do so many things uh, so many different things he's worked for the town for a very long time and he's a very good employee um, but it's just uh, it's a lot of work as you know the well, they get more and more sophisticated yeah. just look at my own cell phone i can barely dial it now <laughs> you know that's about it dialing and texting maybe an occasional email is probably my limit but it could probably do a zillion and other things that's right if i had time to learn and yeah. do it and, you know, our social media accounts, those are things that need to be, you know, if you want to keep them fresh and active, should be done daily, and they should match the information that you also have on your, on your website, which requires sort of daily, uh, you know, overseeing. You know, well, we do it kind of piecemeal now, um, so, you know, it, it works, and we got a pretty good social media presence, but not as good as, as I would like it. It would be nice to do, for, you know, I used to have a scanner. I used to be able to get it through the town paper, but, of mm -hmm. course, there's no more town paper. But so you hear a bunch of sirens. I'm sitting in my house. We hear all, we hear yeah. the, uh, uh, a whole bunch of stuff. There's something happening. And you'd like to know, it would be nice if we could get some instant feedback or some quick feedback, whether it be Twitter or something. I don't know if anybody mans that, but no, maybe well, that's something to get the information out. So Cambridge, Cambridge has the exact same, uses the exact same vendor that we use for, for record management. It's a company called QED. Cambridge, with their technolo technological expertise, they're able to provide, uh, when a call immediately comes in and dispatch enters that into the record management system, it goes out over their Twitter feed. If you've ever followed them on Twitter, you'll see. I have. It comes Maybe in it's real time. Um, and you, you touched on an important point with the newspaper gone. We, we, we have people beating down the door to try to find out, you know, what happened on oh, certain things. And then, you know, and there's people that want to know what happened that just never take that step to find out. So... Yeah, the more we could tie our record management system into our website, into our social media accounts, um, it's better in terms of transparency for everybody. 
And okay. so that's one area. The other area um, that I would like to do is, is someday is to, so we have, uh, we have an officer that handles evidence and handles uh, pr prosecution. They go down to court every day. Police prosecutor. Police prosecutor. They do traffic uh, hearings. You know, I see no reason why that couldn't be a paralegal, somebody to come in to do the, set all the, the, the files up for, um, for cases coming down the road and maintain our evidence. There's nothing that says you have to have a police officer in charge of evidence. A person can be vetted the same way as a police officer, and this, takes, this gives us more officers to put on the street. Um, rather than tie somebody up with uh, doing evidence and, 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 you know, doing the prosecution down to court. And so that's, that would be a long shot, and there's not many departments that, that do that, but that's something that, that we could do. Um, and then in terms of technolog technology, um, I've gotten a lot of requests for body cameras, and um, I would love to have body cameras. I think the officers would love to have body cameras. There's, there's two parts to this, though. There's the purchasing of the body cameras, there's the maintaining of the data, and there's the retrieval of the data. And then there is a, a collective bargaining issue with it um, in well, Massachusetts. You, you, did, you did touch on that. I don't, I don't mean to mm. step on, on what you're saying, is, but it's interesting because you said that the officers want body cameras, and that at least my perception, when body cameras became sort of the rage or the issue du jour, probably in light of uh, George Floyd mm -hmm. or some of those you know, tragic yeah. incidents, uh, my perception was there was great resistance to having that type of equipment on, weight, having it around, et cetera, et cetera. But is, do you see a shift? No, or is well, this the chief talking and not? No, and I'll not tell the you right now. Talk? And this is this is you know I, I haven't polled the officers in the department. I'm just trying to get a beat. I'm, I'm going to give you my personal opinion. That's, that's perfect. If I was a patrol officer, I wouldn't want to work without one. Really? Absolutely. And why would that be? Because it, it's uh, well, because I want a, a record of what I'm doing, who I'm interacting okay. with. Um, you know, God forbid if you get in a use of force incident. You, know, you do you do you do the right thing. You don't have anything to, to worry about. Um, I would. I, I I have really not heard any negatives to people having a body camera on. And I think they've they've showed that complaints go down. Um, officers are, are have a real concern about people making complaints about them that are not you know that are baseless, and the body camera eliminates that if you have that if you have that on you. Now, there have been grants to provide body cameras, um, and we applied for one, but we didn't make it. One, one, of the, one way you do it is you, the, the state will give you the servers and they'll give you the cameras. But if they give you the servers, you have to have a dedicated full-time IT person to manage that, those servers because it's a lot your, of work. That rolls into your first comment, exactly. your first wish of, so, your, of your wish list. So I thought we could, buy, we could do it by buying the cameras and then having the vendor maintain the data um, at a server off-site, and uh, but we just didn't meet the criteria for for that um, with with the numbers, and it, and it was still expensive, um, you know, because now the state won't pay for that off-site server um, work. That was not part of the grant. Okay. So body cameras, um, tasers, as people might know, several years ago we purchased tasers with a, a very generous donation from a private uh, citizen here in Belmont. We have 11 tasers that our officers share. Um, those tasers are going to be need, need to be renewed in um, 2024 calendar year. And they run out? They run okay. out, and they know it's like the, the Axon, the company that owns them, no longer supports them. So you have the taser, and then you have um, a software program that goes with it that they manage. Um, so, you know, it basically records everything the taser does. Uh, when it's tested, when it does, so, you know, you're, you're up to date on it. So I would like to, in 2024, move beyond the sharing of the tasers and have every officer have a taser available to them because um, the tasers right now are used on the street, but when officers are working a detail or a private assignment, um, they're not, they don't, do not have a taser with them. And um, when you get into use of force scenarios and training, you see how valuable that, that taser is. It gives you one more tool on that use of force continuum to go to. Whereas if you didn't have the taser, your next step might be to remove your firearm from its holster. And uh, that's what we want to, you know, try to keep down it, it as, well, well, as it, possible. Uh, I, I see that. So, so right now you, you don't have enough for everybody. No. The, the, the patrol officer, those on patrol, 
switch, trade them off. Yeah, so switch they, them out. they come in and they shift, and we have a, a bank of batteries and tasers, and they switch the tasers out hmm. and, and change them. Everybody has a holster that they, they put their taser in. Okay, and then those and and they run out after five years. So you, in a couple of years, it's going to be maybe a budget item. That's in right. There somewhere is that yeah. a capital item? It would most likely be a capital item for us. Yes. Okay, because I remember discussion on firearms. Yeah. It was years ago, but I've been a Tommy. I've been around. I'm a, I'm a dinosaur, getting to be that way. Yeah. I'm more of a <laughs> fossil. Some as uh, some would. Well, say. you know, they're a lot like the firearms. Like people will say, well, why do you need to replace firearms? You know, how much do you use them? Thankfully, we don't use them a lot in police activity in Belmont, but we do fire them a lot in training and in, you know, every year. So they yeah, do. Brandon, you have a updated, uh, refurbished shooting range, uh, shooting range That's down right. in the basement. Yeah. That looked like a nice thing to have yeah, too. Very nice. Got to very have nice. trained officers, got to have trained personnel, yep. yeah. I would think. Yeah. So, uh, all right. Well, um, what else you got? We got uh, another uh, three, four minutes three, for you to complete minutes. your wish list. Obviously you... So, you know, the cameras, the IT, the tasers, are the, thir are the, the three top, I think um, after that, you know, we would look to see, you know, as I said, the job inside the department, evidence, and, and preparing the prosecution would, could be, I think, a paralegal. Um, How about other staff? You mentioned when we were chatting before the, before the show, you said you have someone in training on uh, a social worker in training, yeah, so some, some type of program you wanted to put there. Why don't you tell us about we that? Have a, we have a grant. We, we were awarded a grant, and, and, uh, and um, we were able to have a social worker co-responder that is uh, the, the focus is jail diversion and emergency room diversion. And while we, we, we've just interviewed and have a full-time person now, but prior to this, we've had a social worker only two days a week. And... Um, she feels as though we could probably use two um, with the number of work that she's doing just in two days a week. And um, it's remarkable to see because the social worker keeps their own uh, records and we have an operations meeting every month and a half. And, you know, you see that there's four or five um, emergency room diversions because if we don't have the social worker there, when the police officer shows up, what are their options? They either get the person to go um, voluntarily to the hospital or the police officer has to fill out a Section 12, uh, which is an involuntary um, trip to the hospital. With the social worker, um, she or he can spend time with the patient. They can talk to, to doctors if they have to. They have the time. They spend as much time as they need. And they make the determination of whether this person really needs to go to the hospital or if they just need to, you know, um, have another work work things out in another avenue so it's been great um you know the other option is you know and it's a it's a jail diversion program if an officer shows up and somebody's in crisis but they're also disturbing the peace or damaging property what option does that officer have but maybe to place the person under arrest or you know get them to go voluntarily or section 12 them whereas the the social worker will work through the process and um hopefully you know divert the person from going to jail hmm. Okay, and they, well, is it sent, it's just for that, or do they show up to domestics and things of that sort? They ride, they, okay, so then in addition to those, they have non-traditional uh, work that they do. So they ride, they're embedded with our offices. She rides in a police cruiser. So you go to a house where there's a, a sudden death, and people are upset. You know, um, she has the skills to work in, in that kind of environment. The police officers do too, but she has specials, and she records those as non-traditional uh, mm -hmm. work that she does. It could be, um, you know, somebody's having, you know, it could be anything that somebody needs to talk to a social worker that would be considered a non-traditional, um, um, you know, approach to the work, and she records that. If it's a call that she's not uh, wanted at, she, she sits in the police car until the, the call, if it's a, like a motor vehicle accident, she sits in the police car till uh, it's done. But even on motor vehicle accidents, with people injured, things like that, she can talk to the patients, she can, you know, it's, you know, you see the, the offices and, and they're in their gear and they're doing this and that. It's very nice and it's very valuable to have a civilian there that is, is used to dealing with people in crisis. And, you know, and, and, and now well, the person in crisis sees somebody who may not look as threatening or as imposing as, you know, a police officer. All right. Well, continue dreaming, continue coming up with your wish list, but that's a pretty, pretty comprehensive list in the last few minutes we've had, yeah. Chief. So, well, that's going to end it for today. These are quick chats with right. the chief. Thank you, Steve. So come on back the next time. We've been 
Uh, ask the police chief. That's Chief James McIsaac. His wish list. Think about it, people. I'm Steve Rosales, your host. Until next time, take care.